In the last few videos, we have introduced the definition of the Gibbs energy, of the Helmholtz energy, and we have also seen how the Helmholtz energy is connected to work. In this video, we see how the Gibbs energy is connected to work. All right, let's start with the definition of the Gibbs energy, which is uh, the enthalpy minus the product of the temperature times the entropy. And what we're going to do is take uh, an infinitesimal change in a process uh, that will be isothermal, okay? So the uh, temperature is constant. Uh, so for an infinitesimal change, this expression turns into differential of G is equal to differential of enthalpy minus T differential of S, where again, in going from that step to this step, uh, from the top step to the bottom step here, uh, we have assumed that the process is isothermal. Right, the next step then is to uh, try to plug in there what the definition of enthalpy is. And the definition of enthalpy from our work in the first law was the internal energy times the product of the pressure and the volume. All right, so if we incorporate that into our expression, this is going to be differential of U uh, plus differential of PV minus T differential of S. All right, now we're going to assume that this process is taking place under constant pressure. Okay, so when, you, uh, when we evaluate this uh, differential here, pressure is constant, it can be factored out, and you turn out, uh, you get this uh, expression, right? So the pressure is constant, P differential of V minus T differential of S. All right, so let's review here the conditions. Uh, we have assumed uh, isothermal conditions and isobaric conditions. Okay, great. Now, the next uh, step here is to plug in the third, first law of thermodynamics, and we're going to do that for a reversible process. Okay, so for a reversible process, we have that this is simply the reversible heat plus the reversible work plus P differential of V minus T differential of S. Very well then. Uh, all right, so here comes a new concept that we have not explored yet in uh, our, our survey of thermodynamics. Uh, most of the work that we have been handling until now has been expansion work. Okay, so that would be uh, the case where you have a gas and that gas is pushing against the piston. But it turns out that that's not the only type of work there is. Uh, there's many other types of work. For example, Every time that you charge your laptop or your cell phone battery, that is electrical work because you have that there's a flow of electrons moving against the gradient, and that's work. That is electrical work. But it's not expansion work. It's a different type of work, electrical work. Uh, other types of work, for example, uh, when you eat a banana, uh, some of the energy that is storing in the glucose of that banana can actually be transformed to flex your muscle. Okay, so that muscular work uh, is, is another type of work which is not expansion. There's no gases pushing any piston, pistons or anything like that, right? Uh, and there's many other types of work. So what we're going to do is, is take this uh, overall work, that is the total work uh, that you have, and yes, divide it into two components. One of them is going to be the expansion work that we're very familiar with, and the other one is going to be non-expansion work, okay? And the way that we're going to distinguish them is uh, the non-expansion work, this new work uh, that you can extract, so electrical, sometimes magnetic, sometimes muscular, sometimes against gravity, uh, uh, that uh, is going to have a prime uh, superscript just to distinguish it from the expansion work. All right, so let's see how that turns out. You come here and say, well, uh, differential of G is going to be equal to differential of Q reversible. And again, this unfolds into two components. Right? First, you have uh, the expansion work. And for uh, uh, the definition of the expansion work is minus the external differential of V. And then we have here the non-expansion work, which is going to be V work rev prime. Okay, so that is uh, what denotes this is uh, non-expansion work. Plus uh, P differential of V minus T differential of S. Right, so let's see if we can consolidate this uh, a little bit. All right, so notice that the first thing we can do is to assume that, um, well, it's not an assumption, an assumption from when going from this step to this step, we have assumed that that was a reversible process, right? So we are in a reversible process. Remember that reversible processes require equilibrium, and in a gas expansion, right, if you have a gas expanding, 
that equilibrium requires that the external pressure is equal to the internal pressure uh, throughout the expansion. That was the condition for a reversible uh, gas expansion, right? So what we can do right away is simply uh, drop this P external uh, subscript, and that is just going to be the pressure of the gas. Again, this only happens in a reversible uh, process. Well, if that's the case, then we can cancel this term with that term, which is very convenient. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's quite good. Now, uh, next we have uh, that term and that term, which we know are related from our second from our, our work with the second law, right? So differential of S is equal to uh, differential of Q rev over T, which means the differential of Q rev is equal to T differential of S. And again, this comes from the thermodynamic definition of entropy. So what we have here is that this is simply differential of Q rev minus differential of Q rev. So that term cancels as well with this term. And in the end, what we actually have is that differential of G is equal to differential of work ref prime, which again is the uh, non-expansion work, so again electrical work and so forth. We can integrate this uh, uh, very uh, readily to recognize what, what we have here is something very useful. The gives energy in a process is going to be equal to uh, the maximum uh, non-expansion work that you can extract from it. Right, so again, what we have done here is integrate, and yes, uh, remember that uh, in a reversible process you get maximum work. All right, so that's uh, the definition that applies. So this gives you a very useful connection between gives energy and the maximum non-expansion work that you can get. Right, so so this type of relationships. Uh, relationship answers the question of, for example, suppose they have a fuel cell to charge up your laptop. In that fuel cell you're going to be combusting a fuel, sometimes methanol, sometimes uh, ethanol, whatever it is, uh, sometimes hydrogen. Right, so you oxidize that to generate products and uh, you do that electrochemically. Right, so from that electrochemical uh, reaction what you can do is extract energy as, uh, uh, as electrical work to charge up your batteries, right? So your laptop or uh, your cell phone. But so the Gibbs energy of that oxidation reaction of that fuel, that methanol with oxygen, the, delta, the Gibbs energy of that reaction actually equals to the maximum work that you can possibly extract uh, uh, in terms of non-expansion work, right? So in the case of an electrochemical device, that would be mostly electrical work, which seems to be uh, like a very useful definition. Right, uh, in the next video, we're going to yes, uh, do a numerical example for how this works so that you can solidify uh, your knowledge of this connection between the Gibbs energy and the maximum non-expansion work.